and uh, our speaker is Joe Buzelli, and he chose a very tricky title for his talk so that I will not be able to easily uh, say it, so I leave it to him. Uh, Joe, um, in addition to being really um, very experienced and amazing uh, data scientist, uh, he's a colleague of mine. Uh, we worked with him uh, for like a, around like a four months together. It was really fun and a pleasure for me to work with him. And I'm sure he will be doing a really great presentation today and we will all enjoy. I pass the mic to Joe Buzelli. Thank you so much again, Joe. And it's really great uh, pleasure to have you here. Okay. My pleasure. It's um, happy to be here today. And as, as Murat said, I had the pleasure of working with him. Um, it was oops, right at the start of the pandemic. Uh, well, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, so UMBC, thank you for having me today. Um, as Murat said, uh, our title today is Visualizing the Day in the Life of a Data Visualizer. Um, so I just want to talk to you about some of the things I actually do at my job, the things I think about, and additionally talk about kind of the, the overarching um, business processes you'll face uh, when you're working. And uh, then we'll we'll jump in and, uh, to a Tableau dashboard and, and look at some of the uh, an actual example. So, as I said, we're going to briefly go over. I'll just introduce myself, go over my backstory, talk about my actions and thoughts as a data visualizer. We'll go over the golden triangle and talk about business process considerations. Look at some dashboard examples, and then we'll you know happily have a Q and A. Uh, as Murat said, if if anyone has a pressing question, I'm not against people jumping in and asking questions. So so please do. Um, let's make this interactive and fun. So let's get into it. So the first thing I do, I talk about data visualization, and then I give you a list of bullets. Let's not do that. Let's go over here and look at my resume in Tableau. So I not pictured here. Uh, I got my undergraduate. Uh, from UNC Asheville, actually in jazz studies, where I was a drummer and a working musician for a few years. Um, I got a bit tired of that uh, and moved uh, into consulting. So I started in Deloitte here in 2009 to 2015. I was doing a lot of secure supply chain, uh, open source due diligence, so uh, researching supplier networks and identifying risks in those supplier networks. As part of that, I, I started my journey into data visualization, creating network diagrams where we would uh, you know, connect each company with a line and just see what kind of interesting relationships came from those visualizations. Uh, after that, I moved to a boutique firm in, in Annapolis called Cypher Systems. I was there for about two years and change um, doing similar work. Uh, at that point, I started working with Llamasoft and, and started working with some IT integration. Uh, I was actually unemployed for a year. Uh, we lost a big contract at Cypher. And uh, this is actually, I, I like to talk about it because it gave me an opportunity to see everything I had done up into my unemployment. And what I realized was the work that I had been doing would eventually be overtaken by automation. So that's when I decided to kind of change the arc of my career trajectory. Uh, and that was done here when I started at Grant Thornton. I started in data analytics uh, as, as the proper, I guess you could call it business vertical or, or job responsibilities. This is where I started working with Tableau. And while I was there, I got my master's in the management of IT from the University of Virginia. Um, and it was actually after that, I, I, I was doing uh, creating Tableau dashboards for safe, agile development teams. And I taught myself enough, enough Python to reduce my processing time by nine, over 90%. Uh, so what took me hours, I compressed it to minutes. And that really showed me the power of automation and Python specifically, that's what I was working in. Um, so I actually decided to take a leave of absence from Grant Thornton. And this is where I met uh, Marat at the Flatiron School during, um, I, I think it was 15 weeks. It felt a lot longer because the third week was when the pandemic started. So 
for me, seeing Murat's face on a WebEx or a Zoom, it, it's just like being home. Um, you know, I had uh, hours and hours of that while I was at Flatiron. But, you know, once again, a pleasure to work with him and uh, taking all that I learned there from, from Murat and all the other instructors. I'm now at Guidehouse, um, and we'll talk about some of the things I'm doing there. So, in consulting, there's the mantra that I want to talk specifically about consulting and, and kind of how I uh, go through the day, what I do. So the mantra of consulting is the client comes first. So there's that expectation that you support your client as your first priority. And this is obvious from a revenue perspective. This is how consulting firms make money. People billing hours against a client is, is generates revenue. Beyond that, uh, and this is across all consulting, there's a general expectation that you work more than 40 hours, and those additional 40 hours are usually usually focused on internal initiatives. And these are either generating revenue through business development, winning new contracts, or decreasing operational costs through uh, realizing automation or um, you know, streamlining internal operations. So let's, ah, what is this? A table? This is terrible. Get it out of here. Let's look at this rather. So my day, or I'm sorry, my week is averages about 45 hours. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But you'll see the majority of my time is actually meetings. I, I, I average maybe about 12 hours or 27% of my week in meetings. Other than that, I'm doing things, and that is um, I'm setting up an analytics um, infrastructure, IT infrastructure for our team in Databricks, uh, and about 10 hours or 22% of my time is there. Uh, another 22% more or less is working in Tableau and Power BI. Uh, on my client site, I, I manage our Tableau server and create you know, a litany of uh, dashboards for them. Uh, I'm always trying to automate uh, using Python. My, my choice is Jupyter Notebooks. It's what I know. Emails are a significant amount of time, uh, coordinating uh, internal efforts and things like that. Uh, recently, I, I, uh, I took the lead for a monthly data visualization technical presentation. And that take, you know, just identifying presenters, it takes a lot of emails and there's just a lot of that. Um, reports presentations in PowerPoint, you know, maybe three hours or so, and then documentation of our IT processes is very important. Uh, if I leave, there's a lot of institutional knowledge in my melon. So someone coming back and replacing me really needs a resource to be able to let the, the organization continue doing what they're doing. So what do I think about on my job? Uh, there's essentially four things that I do as a, a data visual, visualizer and also a data engineer. Um, in terms of visualization, I'm, I'm gathering requirements for dashboards and then identifying those data sources and, and connecting them in various ways into Tableau where I can start developing those visualizations. Before I can make a bar chart or anything, I have to analyze that data to understand what the assumptions are in the data and maybe some of the pitfalls, assess the cleanliness, because I, I can't create data visualizations that paint a picture without clearly articulating any assumptions I make or any um, issues with the data because decisions will be made with this data and I want to make it very clear uh, just how much the data can be believed. Data engineering. Um, part of what we're doing is a lot of the data sets I work with are, are transactional databases that are not properly warehoused. Um, as such, things change. And once they change, we have no way of telling what they used to be. Um, so a lot of the work I'm doing in Databricks is setting up a proper data warehouse. So we have, um, so we can uh, time travel using Delta tables and look at the data as it was and as it is. Uh, and that's important for historical trending analysis, as well as when require when and if requirements change for reporting. We're uh, currently unable to look backwards and and uh, unify our prior analysis, but with a proper data warehouse, we should be able to do that. Finally, process. 
somebody wants a dashboard, how do they do it? How do they request it? That's something we're actually working on right now. Um, and my job kind of lives in the center of all these circles where, you know, I've got to consider all these things in my day to day. We'll go through an actual uh, example of a dashboard implementation, but before we do that, I wanted to talk about the golden triangle. Um, traditionally, the golden triangle talks about people, process, technology, uh, and there's a fourth that that's people are arguing to include. But this is just a way that in the technological revolution, the way that businesses stay competitive, um, this is a framework that defines how they can do that. So, of course, until robots replace us and, and start doing business, people have to make things happen. You know, without people, you're not really going to be doing anything. There's also the process. The process is by which work is done, analysis created, and, and, and value is created. Um, from my perspective as a, a data visualization practitioner or data science or data engineer, uh, we're talking about how do I get access to a new data source? Maybe there's personal identifiable information. I've got to contact not only the operations team to tell me how I get to the data, but I have to contact the security team to see if there are any security issues with me accessing the data. And then I have to tell them what, you know, what I plan to do with it because there may be, I may not be able to do that. So there's, when you're talking about data, you're gonna be talking about process and permissions and access and things like that. Technology, laptops, application servers, communications infrastructure, security, it's all baked into it. Um, and the fourth one that's uh, looking to be added is data. Um, I would agree with adding data because there's just a litany, I'm, you know, cleanliness, um, ethics, uh, bias. There's just so much that goes into data that it, we really need to, you know, focus on it and data integrity if we're really going to take action on the analysis that we're doing on this data. So, with all that aside, uh, I just want to, you know, as a data visualizer, it's not I'm not in Tableau every day, all the day, all day, all the time. That's a, a minority of what I do. The first thing that happens when we create a new dashboard, uh, a, a group wants a new dashboard and they say so. So they request it, we meet with them, we gather requirements for the dashboard and figure out what data sources we need. We then meet with the operations and security team to see if we can have access to that information like I mentioned before. Uh, then we figure out how to connect it, whether it's uh, you know SQL connections or web data connectors, ODBCs, uh, API, you know, whatever it may be, we figure out how to connect it. Then we really get into the data and do that exploratory data, and data analysis, just so what we understand what's being captured. And additionally, we need to actually go back to the individuals that, for example, we have a, a ServiceNow database, and there can be some procedural, uh, procedural differences that realize themselves in the data. Um, so we really need to understand that before we can actually create accurate, accurate dashboards. Once we do that, we when and if we have to join data, we have to kind of go through again and make sure that we're joining it properly. And if it and it doesn't introduce any funky elements into the data source, like duplicate rows and things like that, so we just need to analyze that. Then we can start creating our charts. So after all this, we can make a bar chart or a line chart or a you know anything that we need to tell that story. Once we have all the, the visualizations we need, we combine them into a dashboard. Then I'd like to add my, my, my user interface, I'm calling it my UI, UI, user interface functionality, things like filters, navigation buttons, and, and uh, things of that sort. After that, I like to add act, um, dashboard actions, which allow, if you click on one chart, it'll filter another. So it, it makes um, your dashboard interactive. And that's usually the last step there. At, the, at this point, we'll go back to the um, business owners and show them the dashboard. They'll say, oh, that looks good, but you know, can you tweak this, tweak that? And this will be an iterative process. We'll go back and forth. You know, rarely is it once. Uh, oftentimes, it's you know four, five, maybe six meetings, maybe more. 
um, just to get it perfect. And once that's good, we publish it to Tableau server. And at that point, I'll have to create new user uh, accounts and grant proper permissions. So as you can see, just creating a dashboard is a lot more than this, this little guy here, just uh, creating visuals and things like that. Um, so we've been in PowerPoint quite a bit. Let's, let's jump over to um, some actual visualizations. Before we do that, if you're interested in learning Tableau, you can do it for free. Um, if you have a, an EDU email, you can get desktop, Tableau desktop for free. Uh, they'll give it to you for a year, I think. Um, and then if, if you don't, you can always go to Tableau Public, which we'll go there in just a second. And all you need to, to uh, for Tableau Public is to sign up, download tab, Tableau Public Desktop, and then the only the only issue with Tableau Public is you cannot save files locally. You have to save it to your Tableau Public Cloud account. There's a memory limit on that. Uh, but if you're just learning to if you're just learning the program, it's it's it should be ample. So let's go to my Tableau Public accounts. Spoiler alert: We were already here. Um, this was a GI forecasting bill I created, but I want to look at this one. This dashboard comes from a survey conducted by Mo Yang. He is a consultant. I believe he's with Deloitte. He runs a, a blog called Consulting Humor. Uh, you can click that here to get to it. Uh, and you can also access the data yourself. This is a hyperlink here. But what he did, he did a survey of, you can see here, over you know, 3,000 people of consultants all over the world. Um, so I will say, and as I said before, this is not um, a survey that's vast enough or broad enough to make concrete observations and concrete insights, but um, it is, you know, interesting to look at and, and throw into a dashboard. So I just want to make very clear, like I said before, this is um, this is not a perfect survey, but we can still look at the, the data nonetheless. So uh, one thing about consultants is they love whiteboards. So for the design of this dashboard, I decided to frame it in a whiteboard. Um, additionally, the navigation buttons, here, let me hide, I'm sorry, I got this, there we go. The navig all these navigation buttons, I drew on my whiteboard, took a picture, sent them to myself, put them into PowerPoint, and made them into icons. So just to give it that that visual theme and dynamic of of being a whiteboard, um, it, 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 I wanted to include that down to to every detail. So what we have here are tabs where we can jump to different views, kind of like you can think of it like a Chrome browser, and your tabs there. We click here, we'll go back to my Tableau uh, public uh, profile page, and then we have some, uh, some, some big expo arrows for navigation. So I'll just click on this overview. And what we can see here is consulting salaries uh, at the global level. We can see it by title. So this is part, uh, principal partner director. Uh, we have senior managers, managers, unspecified, uh, level, titles or levels, senior consultants, consultants, analysts, and interns. This is an ordinal list. Um, and when I was talking earlier before about those uh, dashboard actions, I just want to show you an example of that. See, on this, on this map, I can hover and you can see from the U.S., we have 2,000 survey participants. You can see the average base salary, the average bonus, and average combined salary. If I click this, you'll see that this is now highlighted as defined by my dashboard actions. And this um, chart is now filtered down just to the United States. So if I click, keep your eyes on this uh, the chart in the top right. When I click Canada, those values are going to change. Uh, let's go to India. This is gonna be a drastic difference here. Uh, I see a big differential in PPD and um, other title salaries there. So additionally, we can do a control click if we want uh, multiple selections. Let's, what else do we have? Huh? Let's throw Brazil in there. Um, so this is now United States, Canada, and Brazil highlighted here so we know what we're looking at. Um, and once again, we have, uh, I failed to mention this earlier, but we're just looking at average salary 
and the bonuses here is the green line. Um, and we have the tool tips if, if we want to see that explicitly. So there's an overview of salaries there. We can now look at the landscape where by each firm, we can see the minimum and maximum salary. And then this green line is the average. Uh, additionally, over here, we have a 100% stacked bar chart where we can see uh, how much of 100% of the salary is base pay or bonus or incentive pay. Um, here, I like to add, I like to hide my filters in my dashboards. Um, I was uh, in a Tableau conference, I learned that users rarely use the filters so they can be a bit distracting. So Tableau has a really cool feature called show hide where you can click on an icon and show your filters and then hide them when you're done with them. So here we can look at by country. Uh, we're currently just looking at the United States, but we can choose any or all of these countries if we wish. Um, I, my default filter filtration was to one country simply because when you look at all countries, it gets a little it gets a little murky um, just on the on the wide range of salaries. Um, additionally, you can look at in consulting, they, they call them the big four. That is you know, now it's uh, PricewaterhouseCooper, KPMG, Ernst & Young, and Deloitte. So we can look at just the big four if we're interested in that, or we can look at not big four if we're interested in that and see everybody else. Uh, here, the other, this is the other or boutique category, so you're going to see quite a, a wide range of salaries there. Um, additionally, we can look at um, look at these salaries just in co the commercial space or just in the federal space if we want, uh, and there are unspecified values here as well. I can click that to, to clear my filters, and then additionally, you know, we can, looking at this across all titles, because you, you have the bosses all the way down to entry-level people, uh, we can look at just managers if we want to, or we can look at just consultants if we want to, and everything's automatically updated and, and you can see everything there. Uh, and personally, the way I like to develop dashboards is I want to make them interactive and provide the user with uh, the ability to change the data as they see fit. Uh, from my experience, people really enjoy playing with it, right? Seeing the values move. And it's kind of a way of tricking people that aren't uh, curious about data into asking questions of the data, but I digress. Here we're looking at um, uh, some, some data based on specific companies. So if we're looking at Accenture in the United States, and let's look at managers. So what we're looking at here is each survey respondents um, base salary and their bonus, and then a trend line with that. And we're looking here on the axis of the hours they've worked. So I was curious to see if people worked more or less hours, I would have, you know, I had the assumption that maybe they would get paid more. And according to bonus bonuses, that doesn't appear to be the case for Accenture specifically at the manager level in the United States based off of the survey data. Uh, but you do have a, a slight increase in salary for the more hours you work uh, in base pay. Let's look at senior consultants, apply that. Ooh, look at this, less base pay for the more hours worked. I've seen this before in my analysis and I was wondering if maybe these individual that are working long hours are are learning something new or 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 trying a new skill out and maybe have to work more hours to to compensate for that learning curve i know for me when i started tableau and uh grant thornton it was brand new to me i talked my way onto the project and i was working late nights uh and not i probably not realizing a, a base or a bonus increase from that extra effort and that extra effort derived from my improving my skills rather than me doing more work. So yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know why that's the case, uh, but I can, I can make some theories. Um, other than that, we, you know, we oh, have Joe, Joe very quick. What is the shade here? I'm sorry. 
What is the shade of the circles? The shade is uh, it's blue for base salary and green for bonus. Uh -huh. And I'm glad you brought that up. Um, to show if I synchronized, synchronized these axes, you would barely see any of the green. So I made a note here that they are not synchronized um, because traditionally in a data visualization, it is, it is misleading to not synchronize when you have a dual access. If you don't synchronize them, you can make some, uh, you can mislead your viewer. Um, so I just made it very clear that was the case, but yes, it's base salary, blue bonus green. And the transparency is the same for every observation. Uh, because I see some of them are darker green and some of them are like a. No, that's a good question. And I think what, what you're seeing, I believe the transparency is the same for those, but when you see it's darker, Overlap. that's because there's more overlapping yeah. circles. Perfect. Great question. Or just one thing I wanted to add on this one was, let's look at managers again. Here you can see uh, just binning by survey response, respondents how you know what their hourly range was in the average week uh, and then once again the salary and bonuses so that was that uh, oh one last thing i i added a uh, tree diagram down here just to show you if you know, by sector you know is most of this data coming from commercial or, or federal surveys in this case it's commercial um then we can actually click to filter when we do this you know the federal one, it's only four. As I mentioned before, the survey is not robust enough in all categories. Um, so I just wanted to make it crystal clear how much data was informing everything else. Here we have a sand key that um, is by company. You can see the logo there. Um, and essentially what happens here is for employees currently working at Deloitte in the survey they included, have you been offered a job elsewhere and where? Um, with the the qualification that who prov in, include the name of the company that provided the highest salary increase. So you can see here that these companies offered Deloitte practitioners jobs, and these are their answers. Yes, no, thinking about it. Additionally, you can see by title. Oh, and look, you know, I, I gotta fix that. Uh, formatting so there's egg on my face there uh, but you can see the the quote unquote this is an official it's incomplete survey data but based off the survey data you can say the retention rate um, represented in the survey for Deloitte's about 62 percent but you can see there's there's a, a bit of fluctuations by title uh, so I thought that was a bit interesting as well uh, finally we got the heads the the heads up the head to head the, the duke it out Maybe you got a job offer from two different companies and you want to say, oh, hey, who is providing a, a tighter range of, of salaries? I don't know. Let's let's find out. So let's look at fine, Deloitte and ENY. Or maybe let's let's see if we let's do Deloitte and PWC. What was, what does that look like? That's a little closer. But here we could see uh, we can compare those base and bonus salaries here. Uh, we can see the total number of survey respondents and the total number of countries represented in the survey from these companies. And then the total base compensation bonuses and aggregate bonus percentages for all. Um, and that pretty much sums up this dashboard. Let's go here. And then just to show you that it works, hopefully it works. Aha, <laughs> it's always a moving target with those things. Um, so I'm just doing a time check. It's 1236. I'm happy to go through uh, another dashboard if you guys are interested or uh, switch to the Q&A. Marat, do you have a, a preference? So Joe, I think this is really great. Like uh, now we know, I mean, you, you did a great job because you show like, A, it is, this is the, the tip of the iceberg, right? So it's like, as you mentioned in your, in your um, previously slides, like, Okay, users see this part, but there is a lot of work going on on towards this thing. So um, one thing that I'm curious, let's say we have, let's say some students right now, oh my gosh, Tableau is super cool. I want to do this, this visualization too. How much coding, how much work? Let's say I don't know a lot about Tableau, but I am 
you know, like good with the Python, how much work I should do? Can you show us a little bit like the messy backend yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah, that, so uh, I was reading an article about consultants and the article was arguing, they say it depends. Um, and that's very much the case. Let's look at, here, let's look at, uh, Okay, let's look at this Tom Brady. So this is Tableau Desktop. And there's, I just wanna make, these are, you see this kind of grid icon here? That is a dashboard icon. Um, and if we look at this in full screen, we can see we got Tom Brady's career statistics. Here's my reference, pro football reference. We, I'll just give you a quick overview of the dashboard. We have his, uh, his career record here, some of his nicknames, um, and we're able to look at all games, regular season games, just playoff games, and just his Super Bowl appearances. Um, it's really quite amazing how successful he was, but um, I'm not a Tom Brady fan, but I learned to respect him a lot more after doing this dashboard. Um, uh, I saw a Power BI question. We'll definitely get to that. Yeah, we will get back to that. Yeah. Um, passing. You can, we can look at his schedule um, and we can look at his record versus specific opponents. Uh, so let's look at. So here we have. Mm. This is what a worksheet looks like. Um, when you import your data, you'll see it all here. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all my column headers and you'll see here there's a little equal sign versus this next to this dollars or number sign that means this is a calculation so in this calculation his past completion percentage is similar to an excel calculation where i said let's take the sum of his past completions and divide it by the sum of his attempted passes so we get a, a percentage uh, and when I bring this column in over here, it's like, okay, for all the games in this year, I'm going to apply that percentage. Um, that's not set up here in this case, but there's another interesting one here where let's look at the show hide. Uh, this is mislabeled because it was um, from another one. But as you can see, when I toggle this, this is called a parameter. Think of it as a variable. A uh, user defined interactable variable. So when I say this should be show or hide 2000 and 2008, this was he barely played any games. So it doesn't really give these are outliers and it doesn't really help you with your analysis. So if I go here and search for the show, uh, hold on, it'll be a parameter here. Um, and this is where you can enter user defined parameters. So I set this as a string uh, and it's a list so it can have multiple values. And I said, show and hide. Great. How do I make that work? I will go to the filter season from param. Uh, I do that. Oh no, I want to do this one. And I've got a nice little typo over there. Not, not that much. So essentially what I'm saying is if the parameter value equals hide, then I want to, uh, you know, this is a nested if. So if the year is 2008 or 2000, just throw a false, else it's true. So I'm saying essentially here, um, if the parameter value equals hide, take out 2008 and 2000, otherwise show everything else. Um, so you can have, and this is a calculation, TF, Boolean, um, so anything without an equal sign here, you see it is a data field uh -huh. and anything with an equals is a calculation I've made. So it's, it looks like really almost it, an extension of um, Excel really to me here. Yeah, the, Tableau's mantra or what they say is it's, it's supposed to be a no code solution. Yeah, so they say clicks, not code. Um, for me, I prefer the code, but this is really helpful. Tableau is really helpful in the, the, what I really enjoy from it is the user experience and the, having these parameters that will sh just change all the data uh, dynamically. 
and I know I could do this in in uh, uh, Boca or, or Flask or, or wherever. Um, I'm thinking Plotly also right now. Plotly. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, plotly, but honestly, I haven't. I don't have the expertise in it, and for me, it's easier to deliver via Tableau than to go back. Uh, learn Plotly and then start delivering. There's just too much stuff I have to do. Anyway, I, I want to bring up another point about Python. Perfect. This and, dashboard. And then, uh, Joe, at some point, whenever you feel you feel it fits, like uh, if you can mention a little bit like uh, the question Power BI versus yes. Tableau. Yep. Definitely. Um, I, yes. <laughs> So just real quickly, I, I entered a Tableau competition with this dashboard, and this isn't not, this is not the prettiest dashboard. I will concede, but what it, it it includes data from the Veterans Affairs related to the GI Bill. So if you've served in the military up to you know different thirty six months, twenty four months, you get different educational benefits when you separate. Um, and what the VA data gives you is this year's tuition finances. Tuitions go up on the average 8%, and that's across all schools. I'm sure there's a, a wider variety and probably in, maybe in private schools and others, but 8% in aggregate, and they didn't include that data. So what I did for this is I took the, the data they gave for this year, and I replicated it over several years and applied an 8% increase to each tuition. Um, as well as a four, I believe it was a 4% increase in book, spent, uh, book costs. And what they have here is called a BAH, Basic Assisted Housing Allowance, I believe is the definition. Basic Allowance for Housing. Um, that goes up 2.5%. So what this tool does is you can go in here and I had to represent my alma mater here, UVA. You can enter your... Um, your school and if you're in or out of state and you'll see that that changes the costs and uh, once you do that you can actually go in here and enter your living expenses let's say my rent is seven hundred and fifty dollars a month and my groceries let's say i spend a bit more three hundred dollars my transportation costs i walk and my bike works zero and discretionary expenses oh, i love to party twenty five hundred uh, so here you can see it's changing all the values um, based on what you'll have to pay and what the GI Bill will pay over time. And it gives you not only totals here, but it also gives you buckets by year. So you can see, you know, I'm going to have to pay 200. Wow, well, maybe I should cut down on the partying a bit, huh? Let's do 150. So I'm gonna have to pay $150,000, but I can see when I have to pay that over time so I can budget my expenses a little bit more. So I say that only because knowing Python and Tableau is extremely powerful because you can reorganize the data in such a way that you can actually not only do things like this and forecast off of static data uh, with assumptions, but you can also um, create things like radial bar charts and other advanced visualizations that require special treatment of the data. Um, it's not a, a typical you know, row-based, entry-based data setup. Will not work for advanced, really, you know, really sophisticated visuals. You have to get in there and you have to re reformat the data. And knowing Python is extremely helpful in that, R as well, um, and other tools. So I'll stop there um, and shift to the Power BI uh, question. So unfortunately, I don't have any Power BI. This is my personal computer. I don't have any Power BI examples on here, but I do use Power BI for, um, I've automated the financial reporting for uh, the segment of the company that I work. Uh, so another team uses uh, visual basic macros and it can take them hours to process their data. I've set up a script in Python that does it in um, a minute and 20 seconds, I think, under two minutes. Um, and with that, we, we visualize the data in Power BI. What I've found is it's 
a lot more difficult to work in, in Power BI. Um, so I showed you in Tableau, you can go in and create a quick calculation and make a new field. In Power BI, they have a system called DAX, D-A-X. Uh, it's like, it's kind of like Power Query, something like that. Um, it kind of looks like .NET notation. So, and to be perfectly candid, I haven't taken the time to learn it. But the issue I have with Power BI and uh, spe specifically working in an iterative fashion, Power BI can be very limiting in its flexibility to let you change the underlying data. As an example, we've, we've changed the data process for the, this financial reporting. And as such, I now have a few columns that are different. And in Tableau, I can import that data and I have to click through and say, cross map them. So I say, this new column is this old column. This new column is that old column. And all my formulas will, will work and it'll, be, it'll rectify the situation, assuming the data types are the same. You always have to have your data types the same, right? Um, so Tableau, it's, it's a bit tedious, but doable. In Power BI, you actually have to go edit the query and there's a lot of extra work that has to be done to un, well, to, to fix uh, a broken dashboard in Power BI. Conversely though, Power BI feels like PowerPoint. So you can easily you know, grab the corner and make something bigger or smaller and it'll give you those little lines that tell you when things are lined up. Tableau does not have that. Um, so th there is, it's kind of, you know, backend data management win for Tableau, in my opinion. M creating a dashboard easily that you know things are shaped in the right shape and centered and all this. I actually say Power BI win on that one. Um, addition, so one huge drawback with Power BI is I showed you those parameters where I could click show hide these seasons and they would just go away. Power BI does, doesn't feature that. So parameter parameterization uh, currently in Power BI is, is really not there. Um, <clears throat> so what, what you have to... Not to say you can't have the functionality, but you actually have to generate a lot more features in your data um, to make it work. So you, you're not only preparing, there's a, I'll, I'm sorry, I could go about on and on about this, but I'll close by saying for Tableau, it, it's better in an iterative fashion because you're not always sure exactly what you need when you first start out. And for Power BI, it's definitely advantageous to use it, but I would, I would want to really have very tight requirements and a very clear understanding of what, I, what my data is going to be, uh, hopefully it's not changing, and what exactly I have to show, because making those, those changes can be a bit tedious and difficult. So, Joe, we have nine minutes left. Omar is asking about the... Tom Brady data, very, you can, if you can very quickly answer, is it a scrape data? Is it online publicly? Is it also in your website or like in Dash? Like it, yes, that? if you get a Tableau, if you go to my Tableau public account, you can, you can have that data. Okay, perfect. But so uh, this was, this was not scraped, luckily. So here's the, uh, we go okay. here, you can go here and it was a, um, like if you go here, you can get, you know, his career, but they, uh, this website specifically, where is it? They let you look at the data like a CSV and I was able just to copy and paste season aggregates. Uh, here it is, share and export, uh, get table of CSV and here, you just copy that and slap it in and you're good to go. Uh, so this one was informed by that, but you can, so you can go here and get it or uh, this is available for download perfect on tableau public so you can download this dashboard as an image cross tab means all the data that's associated with this view um, you can go ahead and just get the whole tableau workbook um, and then data is everything but let's see maybe it's i don't think this one actually has data 
Yeah, it looks like data is, I'll look into that, but um, uh, just download the dashboard and you can get, you can have everything. Okay, and Michael is saying that where, where were you when, you know, like, um, or he would like to use the GI Bill uh, calculator that you uh, presented us. Uh, but I have a very quick, a couple of questions. So let's say I took introduction to data science course. I know machine learning. I know a little bit big data stuff. Now the question for me is, should I learn really the Tableau? Is it like, what it means knowing Tableau? And also uh, because we have several minutes left, let's say I would like to know Tableau. I'm sure like you have good resources. I don't want to Google it and, you know, like a billions of medium articles and stuff. Like, do you have any good resources that I should go and it will give me a good kickstart? Uh, unfortunately, it's within my company and my client's infrastructure, but I did create a Tableau dashboard that teaches you how to use Tableau dashboards. Fortunately, it's not public, but there, yes. The short answer is yes. So uh, there are kind of two stages. Um, there are a lot of tutorials out there and you'll see they deal with the Superstore data set or the, uh, the other Tableau, when you open it, it comes with two default data sets, uh, Superstore and uh, World Happiness Indicators, I think is the other one, but Superstore is the one everyone uses. If you want to learn Tableau, there's YouTube videos, are hands down if like even with data science stuff i go to youtube videos quite often um given that it's clicks not code you kind of have to see it in action but once you get an a, an understanding of how they set up they have measures which are you know categorical variables and boolean is in category in the measures as well and then you have um dimensions which are numerical values blue pills green pills uh, and you can just drag and drop them here and there, not to sound like the matrix or anything, but you drag and drop them here and there and it'll, it'll make the visuals for you. Um, so YouTube videos or, or, or tutorials like that is a good way to get a, a, a solid understanding. There is, um, and I'll, I'll update the slide deck and share this, but the, my, the, the, um, they call them Tableau Zen Masters uh, for link. I can never say their names. Uh, Tableau Zen Masters. These guys, they're, yeah. The Fleurlage twins, they are uh, twins that live in Cincinnati. And they have this blog here, which is absolutely incredible. It, it goes through and shows you how to make really interesting views and really advanced um, Tableau dashboards. Um, and they give you a lot of, of clear guidance. Uh, here's an interesting one that uses a uh, GPS um, API to kind of show travel times in a, in a uh, over time intervals. Um, so they, they just have a plethora of uh, excellent tutorials on I would say kind of 201 to 501 level material. Um, you know, we're talking about level of, oops, level of detail and just fixing and excluding records and things like that. Perfect. And, and what about like, uh, what is knowing Tableau? When I can, like how much time I should put on? I, I know like bear with me, right? So I'm just trying to ask like, a yeah. self, and you know, meaningful questions a little bit. I know that they are not well defined, but when I can put my, in my resume, I know Tableau, what it means. Well, that's a great question. I would say um, at least a year. And, and, well, now let me caveat that because it, it took me about a year, but I was learning how to structure the data most appropriately and Tableau at the same time. So I could say, I would argue you could, you could say you know it in less time if you have a firmer grasp of data and it, it, its relationships and its structure before you get into Tableau. Perfect, awesome. And, um, you know, uh, so we had, in fact, um, 
web applications course offered as an elective course. So maybe this kind of stuff. They were using Tableau. And, you know, when you will uh, teach with us, so you can also have this <laughs> thing in that within a semester, I am, I'm sure. Um, so anyone, uh, so we are having two more minutes. If you have any other questions. And again, Joe, thank you so much. And if you can update the, the presentations with the links and all these other sources, it will be really awesome. For example, even YouTube, if you have a particular channel or something like that, or particular people doing great job with the Tableau visualization, it will be really awesome. Anyone else, you can unmute yourself and ask your questions to Joe. Pleasure, thank you. Uh, Pram is asking, when could we expect admins for data science program? I mean, uh, probably like a, if you, it depends on when you applied and you can always send me an email. I will send my email to here. And, um, if you have any questions about our program, so, um, obviously we cannot our, our like our visualizations and stuff um, will not be able to as good as Joe's, but you know, we have instructors as good as Joe's and you know, they are doing great job. So if anyone also not in this, uh, uh, in the program, but you want to be uh, like, in, you are interested in applying to UMBC, please let me know, okay? Uh, and I, I put my email to here. So what do you use for ETL? Maybe this is the last question Jeff is asking. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, future state will be Databricks, but um, currently uh, just given the limitations of our, our infrastructure, uh, SQL, we have two data so two main data sources we use. The first is a SQL database. So in Tableau, you're actually able to write SQL queries at the ingest level. So using SQL, you can do ETL there. However, for we have a ServiceNow data as well, and that comes through a web data connector, which is a Azure powered, Azure hosted um, Power Apps script in .NET. And just the way it's set up, we're not we're unable to do any ETL on that data set. It's a massive headache and it's just, it, it really slows down the dashboard, especially when we get to server because there's maybe 70% of the columns that exist we do not use. But to answer your question in the future state, it will be Databricks and it will be a glorious, glorious time. Joe, it looks like we will, we will have to have you again and you know maybe it can be more hands-on uh stuff it looks like we have like some interaction and you know it, it might be fun to see you in action also this is today's meeting was really uh really really awesome though like i think we have a good sense of not like the polished uh you know package but you know like um throughout what's going on in this in this process um i would like to really thank you in uh, uh, in the name of our students and our like uh, participants and again see you soon again okay so i think we will have you again <laughs> my pleasure thanks for having me